Welcome back to the Uranium Viva channel. Today's Fallout 76 tutorial is part 2 of Bad Notions Guide on how to build sky camps. Using this technique to build UFOs over Whitespring and gunships to fight the Scorch Bees Queen, he'll be showing you how to move your camp over almost any location in the game world, and in today's video, how to build once you're up there using blueprints. Let's get started. The technique we're showing today can be split into three main parts. First, the method to create semi-permanent world objects, which will allow you to repeatedly move your camp to your desired location. Second, the blueprints you'll need to build with, including a column blueprint you'll need for part one, and blueprints to build with once your camp is off the ground. And lastly, how to actually build once you've reached your desired location. This will include building a safety net of roofs to map out the bottom of your build zone, and all the different blueprints you'll need to use when building your UFO. You won't have any foundations in the sky, so blueprints are a necessity to build with. In today's video, we're focusing on part 2 and 3. The first video covered how to create semi-permanent world objects, so if you're unsure how to do this, then make sure to watch part 1 first. We will touch on it in this video, but the focus is definitely on creating all the blueprints you'll need, getting set up to start building, a checklist of things you'll need to be aware of when building sky camps, and at the end, a let's build as we join BAD making a new UFO. So, to start, let's break down all the blueprints we'll need for this process. In the first video, you only need to use a few of these to create the semi-permanent world objects, and travel to where you want to build. In part 2, you're going to need much more. So, kicking things off then with the column blueprint. Now, we did show how to do this in part 1, but set down a single wooden foundation. Now, snap a column to the middle snapping point on one side. For now, it doesn't matter which column. Leave it there and head to your floor decor menu. What we're looking for is something very small to use in conjunction with a column. Decoy ducks are a popular choice, but today we're using a Brahmin plushie. I just want to reiterate here, multiple small items will work for this instead, so you don't have to use this plushie, you can use anything really. So line up the plushie with the column just in front of it. Now move the column away and edge the plushie in place of where it snapped like so. Once you think it's correct, snap a small column back in place. The object at the bottom should be poking through. Attach a large column on top of this and blueprint all three. Name it and save it. We're going to need a couple more blueprints too. So place down some stairs on a wooden foundation and attach a single upper floor to it. Blueprint this upper floor and save it as a floor. Attach a quarter floor as well and blueprint that. Finally, do the same with the half floor, blueprinting it and saving it like so. To make semi-permanent world objects and actually get high in the sky, you won't need the vault catwalks from the atomic shop. However, if you're looking to build a camp using blueprints that can be free placed and will look clean, then this is really an essential item. Those or the alien catwalks which also work for this. If they aren't in the atomic shop currently, then both can be picked up for around 500 atoms if you submit a ticket. Link on how to do this in the description if you're unsure. Now, this next blueprint will require that you already have access to a full circle blueprint. There are quite a lot of these about, but if you want to create one from scratch, I've left a link in this video's description. Failing that on PlayStation, we can drop one of these down for you at a workshop, and I'm sure there'll be others on PC and Xbox who can do the same. Now the reason we need one of these is to actually blueprint a small section to make a quarter circle blueprint, that will form the basis of the UFO's circular shape. This consists of four walls, and begin by snapping four new foundations to the exterior, like you can see here. Switch each corresponding wall to a doorway, and remove the foundations on the inside. Switch them back to walls and snap a vault catwalk single piece on the inside of the circle like this. Using a small mat or rug, try to place this in the middle so it's intersecting with the lining of the catwalk on the foundation blocks on the exterior. Do this of all four and then blueprint the mat, the wall and the catwalks, but not the foundations. The result is a quarter circle blueprint that will be essential for the circular design of the UFO. Now for the next series of blueprints. We can make multiple from one setup. So start by placing a wooden foundation and snapping a single wall to one side and a half wall to the opposite side. Snap two wall arches to the sides, then a slanted roof to the top, and snap two angled walls to this. Now let's blueprint. First just select the full wall and blueprint it, and then each corner, saving these as separate blueprints. Do the same with the wall arch corners, and save a half wall blueprint as well. Now get rid of the top wall arches and switch the roof to flat and rotate it. Switch it back to slanted, and attach two of these wall slants. Save these as separate blueprints as well. 
and you can replace them now with full war slants. These are the bigger variant and same as before, save as two separate blueprints. Now start from an empty foundation and attach a catwalk to it like this. Snap a full wall to the catwalk. Place a mat so it intersects the, with the bottom of the catwalk. Blueprint all three and save them as catwalk full. Repeat this process exactly, but with a half wall instead of a full wall. Save this as catwalk half wall. Get rid of the walls and snap some stairs in their place. Blueprint all three for a catwalk stairs blueprint. That's the blueprint sorted. So now let's pick up where we left off in the first video and let's get you set up to start building. Once you've reached your final placement for your sky camp, set down the module and place a column blueprint before snapping a set of scaffold stairs next to it. Our aim with this step is to keep these stairs here with the module placed on top. This is actually a pretty safe placement as traveling here should put you on top of the stairs. The next step is using the platform to build a staircase made of temporary roof pieces down to the bottom of the build zone. To do this, start by placing the half wall catwalk blueprint we just made. You can remove the catwalk and mat once it's done. Snap a slanted roof to the top of the half wall before making it flat. Jumping on top of it, slap another slanted roof facing downwards. Switch this one to flat as well. You can get rid of the half wall now too, and the first roof. All we need to do now is continue this process downwards. Snap a slanted roof to a flat roof. Switch the slanted to flat once placed, and just repeat these steps. You will know you've reached the bottom of the build zone once the option to snap another slanted roof will be red meaning it's now time to build that safety net along the bottom of the build zone. Bad likes to use glass roofs for this, and essentially all you need to do is keep snapping as many as you can at this height, mapping out the edges of the build zone. Eventually, you'll be left with something like this. A lot of the glass roofs fully spanning the build area, and the temporary staircase of roofs leading down from that original staircase. Because these are all flat and not slanted, you can actually now remove these temporary roofs at will. So do this and make sure to leave that original staircase platform with the camp module on as it will need to stay there until we have got much further into the camp build. Making sure the fast traveling works as intended is one of the most important steps. So leaving this here as insurance is a necessity. More on this for in a moment. All the semi-permanent medallions will disappear as soon as we fast travel away far enough or when we leave the world entirely, which is why it's important to do all of this process in one go until you reach the location where you want to build and you've set up like we've shown here. Finish the setup phase and now you're free to come back at a later date to start building. Before that though, it's time to go through what you need to be aware of when building sky camps. Breaking everything down into simple terms, there are these are the main things you need to get right. Finding and testing your fast travel location, ideally with the help of a friend if you're in the process of building. Ensuring you don't use items which could interfere with fast traveling. We recently discovered one which does do just this. Make sure that the fast travel location is located on something solid that won't disappear if the camp was to be damaged or destroyed by other players, nukes, etc. Otherwise, your camp module could literally fall to the ground. And during the process of making the video, we actually discovered some added facets to ensuring you stick to these three things. You may have seen the giant floating hat in this video, and its creation was actually a direct result of an item interfering with fast traveling. But starting from the beginning, once you've finished the setting up phase and you still have that staircase platform, you are safe. The only thing that could happen at this stage is the odd enemy spawn on top of it. But as you can see, that really isn't anything to worry about at this stage. Now let's show what can happen if fast traveling isn't paired. During this video, I ended up being stuck in a fast travel loop, where I'd be spawning on the ground instead of on the ship. Luckily in this instance, Bad already had a different UFO nearby. And the result? Launching me via spring trap in an attempt to get me back to my camp. The third time though is the charm, and I joined Cleveland who'd managed to launch himself successfully in one attempt on the ship. Oh, and something else, my death claw is also here. So yeah, be careful if you happen to have a pet in a different camp, as they may end up traveling here too when you load in and out of a server with your sky camp still active. And having a pet in a sky camp might not be the best thing, but who knows. I'm sure you're wondering how this could have happened. Well, the process of creating a solid base for the camp module was done correctly. We're going to show you how to do this exactly in the build later on, so don't worry. But as you can see in this example, Traveling to the camp module, Cleveland would load in and then disappear before spawning on the ground. So that's not good. Switching up the platform and adding permanent objects like a wall, catwalks and an upper floor piece and still spawning on the ground. And the culprit is actually the greenhouse dome prefab and removing it completely and the fast travel will start working again as intended. So we highly recommend not using the greenhouse dome in a build. Fast traveling actually works by prioritizing certain camp items. Stairs, catwalks and upper floors will always be priorities when you travel, 
meaning you should spawn on one of them if they're used in a sky camp. Stairs are normally the best of the three, but in this instance, the greenhouse dome was interfering. Because the original design of the ship was built around using the dome, we actually had to start from scratch for the UFO you'll see today. And starting from scratch was actually how we discovered this next detail, creating a semi-permanent world object on the first UFO in an attempt to place a second camp on the object resulted in, cannot place item, need support. And multiple attempts at this, even using different semi-permanent world objects, resulted in exactly the same thing. We even tried using a large Nuka-Cola truck prefab. So whatever the reason, apparently trying to start this process on top of a previous build may result in you not being able to place your camp module. As it turns out, we ended up starting the process shown in part 1 again from the golf course and, yeah, the module placed okay, so we even ended up closer to the White Spring main building than before. Anyway, enough talk, let's build a UFO. Beginning from the end of the setup phase, we start by removing two glass roofs at the bottom of the build by switching to slanted and removing them. This allows us to place the quarter circle blueprint in that space. With it placed, you're free to remove the mats now. Next, start by snapping an angled roof piece to each side of the first wall section, and then a series of three flat roofs. Mirror the other side by snapping a pair of angled roof pieces to the third flat roof. Now this is an interesting little trick here. So changing the middle piece to the angled corner variant and snapping a mirrored piece to it before switching back to flat has actually changed the direction these flat pieces are going in. You can see from the grooves on the underside. So feel free to remove the first angled piece now and replace with a flat piece going in the new direction. Same as before, the aim here is to have a total of three flat pieces including the middle piece and finish by snapping the angled pieces on either side. This last piece actually required us to re-log, as it wasn't allowing us to snap it on. This can sometimes happen, so if something does go red for you, then perhaps just try re-logging first. Anyway, moving on with the basic shape. Switch each inner angled piece to flat and remove them. Do this on each side. And then do the same with all the middle pieces. The only bits we want to stay here are the angled outer pieces. So it's time to start from scratch off on the second bit of wall. And I've sped this up a bit, but here's the entire process again. The goal is to keep doing this until there's an entire ring of angled roof pieces forming a circle. With that done, let's remove the catwalks. Switch all the angled pieces to flat. Now remove the walls and fill in the floor with glass roofs. The next step is snapping angled pieces to the flat pieces, leaving a gap of one roof in between each like you can see Bad doing here. And now it's time for today's helper Drago to step in and kill me accidentally. Fixing that quickly, we're back on track as Drago destroys the roofs we just placed. This allows us to snap roofs in the first gaps now, as the first layer is broken. For now, these suffer the same fate though, as everything gets temporarily destroyed. A quick fire section now as we're snapping angled pieces facing the other way in the inner circle. These interlock, so Drago is destroying each place piece immediately, allowing us to place a new piece that intersects. This is predominantly why having a friend help you out speeds this whole process up so much, and using flamethrowers would have taken much longer. With that one done, switch the outer ring back to angled. Once the circle is complete, snap opposite facing angled pieces to these. Drago kindly destroys these, allowing us again to fill in the gaps. We did have to repair the outer ring first though, to continue snapping roof pieces in place. But make sure not to repair all yet on the camp module. That's finished, so switch the outer ring back to flat pieces. Finish switching them, then it's time to break them. Same theme as the inner ring, the broken roof pieces adorning the edge allow us to snap in more flat pieces to fill in those gaps. There are quite a lot of intersecting pieces with this build, but sticking it out will result in the unique shape at the end. Same as before, you know the drill. And this time switch sides, snapping more flat pieces in the mix. Go ahead and start repairing the outer ring once you are done. 
But again, don't repair all just yet as there's more to do in the inner ring. Make sure all the slanted pieces facing inwards are broken as we begin snapping flat pieces to the center. Similar to earlier on, this is rapid fire as each placed flat piece can quickly be destroyed by Drago and an intersecting flat piece can be placed. If you do snap something wrong, then just switch it to slanted to remove. What you should end up with is a much smaller circle in the middle. We repaired all now, so you can have a look at how it's looking. But we aren't done and Drago is back to work. Same as previous steps, we're now snapping angled glass roof pieces to create an interesting looking central structure for the UFO. Snapping slanted pieces before they are rapidly destroyed and moving on to an intersected piece. This section may take a while. You'll end up though with something like this. Repair all and you can see the whole centre has been filled by the angled intersecting glass roof pieces. Now I'll switch up the flat pieces above to create an intersecting slanted shape. Break these and head inside the ship. Bad has decided he wanted the entire central section to be glass, so proceeding to change the upper innermost ring to all glass roof pieces. And to fill up the space that's now above the central cluster of angled glass pieces to the outer ring is more intersecting glass roofs. Jumping outside is looking pretty crazy now. Repairing everything to get a better look, there's still one small detail to do. Which is switching this ring over slanted roofs to glass. With the basic shape now done, it's time to move on to that extremely important step of building where the fast travel location is going to be. Currently during the build, the floating staircase is still active, which allows us to build freely and potentially leave and come back if we wanted to. But now let's add the fast travel location. Because Bad is building this with friends able to test the new fast travel locations, it's safe to remove the initial floating staircase and build the new one, moving the camp module down to the build. Breaking a section of the roofs at one side is going to let us slide in one of the blueprints from earlier, which is the full wall camp wall. The goal here is to be able to snap a set of stairs to this catwalk down into the build, and add a section of catwalk to when players travel when they spawn on top of the ship. With the stairs in place, remove the excess. Now to improve the chances of this working as intended, we added some smaller catwalks on the exterior, snapped to the stairs. We did switch the staircase to the metal one, with railing in the build menu, and also added some small catwalk sections, snapped to the bottom of the stairs where the camp module is going to sit. Breaking the roofs to slide to the camp module in to the back, before repairing all. The camp module is now just poking through the roof sections and testing it, it works nicely, as Drago spawns on top of the exterior catwalk, like you can see here. Confirming it works after a few more tests, it's now safe to start removing the glass floors mapping the bottom of the build. Switching each to slanted actually allows you to remove them. Decoration was underway too, with some strobe lights being added. But before we finish up today, we still need to add the entry points into the build, and some generators to power any lights. Pretty simple this, as we switch two of the second ring of roofs to flat, sliding in two personal terminals facing towards the centre of the build. Switching back to slanted and interacting with them to test if it carries us into the build once you've disengaged. And yeah, it works as intended. So now for the power source. Bad decided to add the generators next to the staircase holding the camp module just above the interior catwalks. Laying out a series of small vault generators powering the build, but this is really up to you what you want to use. Adding a conduit inside will also allow you to wire up the interior before you switch the roof back to slanted. So that brings us to the end of the build height tutorial. The interior decorating was a solid chunk of around 4 hours including adding a ring of rotating colour wheel lamps, creating a makeshift cockpit and wiring the top of the glass roof section. In summary though, I hope this set of two videos helped with explaining how you can use semi-permanent world objects to move your camp over any location. This final UFO was actually really really close to the pre-existing location. And the Let's Build helped explain how you can use pre-made blueprints to create circular shapes without using any foundation, upper floors, or other permanent build objects. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments, and what, if anything, you plan to build using this technique. If you enjoyed this particular video, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. 
We have more camp builds, tutorials, data mines, and Nuka World on tour related videos releasing very soon. So turning on the bell icon is the best way to stay up to date. With that said, I'm off. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.